I'm going to come over here and click on planar. Then I'm going to select this face of a block that I have fixed. And I'm going to select this bottom face of this partial cylinder. And you'll see that it automatically snaps together. So I'm going to hit OK. Now I can drag this cylinder around and it's always going to be constrained. And even if I drag it off the block, it is still constrained on this plane. We want to add one more constraint. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click on tangent mate and I'm going to select this face of the cylinder and also this face of the block. Now you can see that the cylinder snapped to the wrong side of the face but we can just click flip primary axis and it'll bring it back. And once I hit OK, I can drag this now against that face and it's always going to be in alignment. We want to do this another time in order to make sure that our cylinder is fully constrained. So I'm going to click on tangent mate again and I'm going to click on this face and click on this face. And again, it's going to snap to the wrong side, but we'll flip the axis. And when we hit OK, you're going to see that this time, the cylinder can only rotate now. Now we're going to come over here to Revolute Mate. I'm going to click on it, and we're going to select the inner edge of this cam. And we're also going to select the inner edge of this cylinder. Hit OK. We can rotate this cam now. But in addition to rotating the cam, we also want the cam follower to be in contact with this top face. I'm going to select this tangent mate and I'm going to select this face and this face of the cam follower. And you can see that the cam follower is now inside the cam. I'm going to hit flip primary axis and hit OK. And now when I rotate the cam, you can see that it's now tangent throughout its rotation. At this point, you might be wondering, how is it that when we rotate the cam, the pin always goes up and down? I'm going to right click here where it says slider. We're going to hit edit and you're going to notice that the outside face of the pin is the first selection and the inside face of the block is the second selection. And with these two selections, it forces the pin to only be able to move up and down through the block. And now we're going to re-add this mate. Let me come over here to slider. I'm going to select this outer face and select the inner face. You'll also notice that this purple piece and the rod are connected. They're attached using a fastened mate. So we can just right click edit and you'll notice that it's a very simple mate. All it does is it just connects the parts so that they can't move. They're both glued to each other. When you see fastened, it just means that they're glued together. This link is attached using the Revolute constraint. As you can see, it can only rotate. This link cannot move up or down. It can only rotate in, in these two directions. So what we're going to do is we're going to delete the Revolute constraint. I'm going to now freely move this. And we're going to add the cylindrical mate. So I'll select the bottom of this pin and I'll select the bottom of the link. Now I can both rotate it and it can also move up and down. It's basically one more degree of freedom that it gives you. And that's the difference between the cylindrical and the Revolute constraints. I now have that same link as before, but as you could see, I've added a second link. What we want to do is have it move inside of this slot. So we're going to constrain the pin to the inside of the slot using the pin slot constraint. So I'm going to unsuppress what I've already created here. You can see how it moves in and out, but there are limits on its travel. We're going to recreate it by coming over here to pin slot constraint. The first selection is going to be the bottom of the pin. So we'll click on it. The second thing that we'll select is the bottom of the slot. We're going to come over here and click on limits because without limits, the pin is going to move outside of the walls of the slot. One thing that you'll notice here is that we have the triad, the X, the Y, and the Z, but the X is pointing outside of the slot. We want that X to be pointing the other way towards the inside of the slot. So we're going to click here where it says reorient secondary axis. And every time I click on it, it's going to rotate that triad. And now you can see that the X is pointed inside of the slot. We want to set a maximum and a minimum limit on the travel of the slot. For the minimum, since we're starting from here, the zero point, we're going to make this zero. 
And then for the maximum, the max travel is about 44 millimeters. So we're going to hit 44. We're going to hit OK. It can move from the zero position all the way to the 44 millimeter position. And that is the pin slot constraint. One of the more interesting constraints is the width constraint. We have here this piston and this connecting rod. And what we want to do is select the outside faces of the connecting rod. So we have just the outside faces. And then we're going to select the inside faces of the piston under with mate connectors. There's a plane, an imaginary plane that runs through the center, and they're both constrained to that imaginary plane. It makes it so that the width is directly in the center line. If I move these parts so that we're looking at them right from the side, the connecting rod can only move now in this direction. So we can finish constraining this assembly by using the cylindrical constraint. So I'm going to come over here to cylindrical. And I'll just select this cylinder and then the inside cylinder here. And that will connect them. If I fix the connecting rod, so right click fix, now you can see that the piston rotates as necessary. It's right in the middle because of the width constraint. Let's say you want to constrain a ball and socket. We're going to come over here to the ball mate, click on it. I'm going to select the inner radial pocket and then I'll select the ball itself and that will automatically constrain them. As you could see, when I rotate it, the ball rotates inside the pocket very effectively. And we can try one more mate. I'm going to come over here to parallel and I'm going to select the top face of this cube and the top face of this cube and hit OK. And you're going to notice that now we can only spin because that parallel mate makes this face and this face parallel to each other. Let's mate these two gears so that they could spin together. We're going to come over here to gear relation and I'm going to select the two cylindrical mates which mate the gears to the back plate. I'm going to select the driving gear cylindrical mate first and then the driven gear cylindrical mate. Now I'm going to type in the ratio, which in this case is three, and I'm gonna hit okay. I like the way that the gears are mated, and when I turn the handle, I could see that they're rotating correctly. The issue I'm having is making them run smoothly. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna animate this mate. I'm gonna right click on this driving gear cylindrical mate, and come to animate. Now I'm going to select that cylindrical degree of freedom and make sure it's selected here. And then we're going to come to loop. We're going to see that it animates that movement. If we'd like, we could also change the steps. I can make this say 400 steps instead of 300. And you see that it turns very smoothly. Look at what happens when I make it just 20 steps. That covers all of the basics of mates in Onshape. All of the assemblies shown were found in the public tab of Onshape. I highly recommend looking through this incredible list of projects. One particular model to open is the classic VW engine and gearbox. This assembly is very detailed. This is an inspiring resource which shows many different examples of mates and how many different mates can work together in complex mechanical ways. Thanks for watching.